SEMA is in fact an acronym. C stands for quality clinical service, uh, which is really the most important thing. And then M is model management. Uh, ER is education and research. So basically, uh, our goal is to provide quality eye services, patient center, and holistic eye care to all those in need. And our bottom lines are, number one is safety, number two is patient satisfaction, and number three is quality. This is extremely important uh, because in the pandemic, people stand, tend to stay at home and then they use a lot of the monitors, the electronic devices, so on and so forth. So the eyesight, especially the myopia, the short-sightedness, will be getting worse and worse. So as a matter of fact, uh, for people in China, over 600 million, they are suffering from myopia. And the degree of myopia, when there are more than five diopters, is considered as high myopia. So the higher the degree of myopia, the longer the eyeball it is. And then you will be have associated complications. Some of them, such as retinal detachment and macular degeneration, can lead to blindness. So in the pandemic, uh, the problem of myopia is getting worse and worse. So I think this is uh, one area that we have to pay attention to. Uh, hopefully by proper measures, for example, uh, we, have to, uh, we have to advise the parents and then also uh, all those people at home, in particular kids, to develop a uh, good visual habit. For example, uh, the reading distance has to be more than 30 centimeters. When you look at the computer, it has to be more than 60 centimeters. And then, don't work continuously. So every uh, 15 minutes, you have to give your eyes one to two minutes break by looking into the distance. So these are some of the uh, important things. On the other hand, uh, in the pandemic, uh, people uh, do not want to go to hospitals. So in future, the uh, internet uh, online service will become something big and important. When you're talking about internet uh, medicine, so there are a few core components. Number one, uh, whether the technology is able to support you or not. So nowadays with the 5G, uh, with the internet plus, uh, with all the new technologies, this is okay. Number two is about uh, whether patients are willing to do that or not. Yeah, and also whether doctors are happy about this. So uh, you need a process to educate both the professional as well as the patients. And in this uh, pandemic, so uh, people feel that, oh, I do not want to go to hospital. So the time length, uh, the environment is a uh, favor for such a development. And number three is very important, is uh, regulatory. Yeah, for example, uh, we have to protect the privacy of uh, patient's data. And also, uh, this is different from that of a face-to-face -face consultations. In case something happened, uh, where will stand the responsibility? So the uh, regulatory body will have to look into details. What should be done? What could be done in the internet? So I think uh, it takes uh, a while before we can go to a sort of more mature stage of uh, internet uh, medicines in Hong Kong. But in China, you will go much faster. Why? Because the need is there. In terms of the medical resources, it's quite good in big cities. But much worse if you're going to the second or third tier cities, or even to counties or villages. So through these uh, internet medicines, the gap can be bridged. So the government and the patients, they have the strong intention to do that. And therefore, my belief is that uh, the internet online medical services uh, will develop much faster in China. And, and because of that, our hospital in Shenzhen has already uh, successfully obtained a license on this uh, uh, internet uh, service on eye care. Two major components. One is the machines themselves. 
Yes, uh, nowadays they uh, can really do excellent uh, investigation or examination. So they generate a lot of good data. On the other hand, is the internet system. Uh, so you can uh, capture all the information into the computer. Yeah. So for example, a patient has been outside and uh, maybe spent uh, one hour and uh, have three, four uh, important examination done. So when they come in, instead of having a lot of uh, printout, so we just look at the computer here. Like for example, uh, this patient, we have done the scan for the macula. Macula is the central part of the retina, which is very important for vision. And then the optic nerve, and then this is the visual field. So we have all the information stored in this system. Yeah, from photos uh, to high quality. Yeah, this uh, plain white, uh, you know, uh, pictures so uh, we can also communicate with our patient very easily for example oh it's quite whitish your optic nerve is damaged you have a glaucoma or there is some hemorrhage so on and so forth so uh, we have been using this system not just for Hong Kong uh, we can connect this uh, with our other satellite clinics in Hong Kong as well as the rest of uh, China's uh, you know uh, patients or hospital in our uh, setting so this is extremely powerful yeah. So uh, I think it's environmental friendly and then uh, you can store all the information say before the operation and after the operation and then you can make a comparison so that you can communicate with your patients in a very sort of uh, you know, uh, easy understanding way so that they know where they are and so uh, I think this uh, is the uh, system that we are using yeah, uh, which is backed up by the new eye technologies and the internet technologies. In the past, the fundus photo can only show the uh, central part of the uh, retina, uh, which was very important already. Yeah, but nowadays with uh, newer machines, they can show all the way to the peripheral, to the two sides of the retina. So for example, uh, here is the central part, the macula and the optic nerve. But then the peripheral, in this particular patient, he wants to receive a myopia surgery. But then with the screening, we find, that, oh, there are a number of holes with a localized retinal detachment, dangerous. To do myopia surgery or not is one thing, but more importantly, whether your eye is healthy or not. So for this patient, we have to do laser treatment for him. And then another patient, actually, you can see is a retinal detachment. Yeah, so this uh, new technology, new machine is able to show great majority of the retinal uh, you know, uh, status from the central to the peripheral. And this is extremely helpful uh, in our practice. We are also developing uh, a new adapter in which, by hooking this up to a standard mobile phone, we will be able to take pictures uh, covering the important parts of the retina, the macula, the central part, and the optic nerve. And then, we will fool the mobile with a click. You send the images to the internet up there in the cloud. And over there, we have the artificial intelligence, which can make intelligence interpretations. And this will be very useful for many conditions like glaucoma, macular uh, edema, or diabetic eye conditions. So that means you can do it at home, at your leisure. You do not need to go to the hospital, but you can still uh, monitor your own eye conditions. And then we have on the other side, artificial intelligence to make a preliminary screening. And if we screen out something, then do doctors or the hospitals will treat in to advise the patient that you may have to come back earlier for an early attention or treatment. So uh, this new technology uh, is in rapid phase of development. We expect this to be out in about one, two years. Furthermore, we are also uh, working hard on this uh, internet eye surface. So uh, in Shenzhen, we have already obtained a license to provide such a surface. Uh, during this uh, COVID period, uh, we had uh, you know, some try run uh, in which I'm sitting here. <laughs> but then we have the patient in Shenzhen 
uh, and then our doctors over there. So food is an uh, internet uh, online uh, facility. Uh, uh, without traveling uh, far, I will be able to give advice to patients. So I think uh, this will be one of the major developments uh, in eye care services in China in particular. We started in Hong Kong in 212 and then uh, we went to China, to Shenzhen in 2013 and then we were very fortunate to uh, have our company listed in the main board of the Hong Kong stock market in 2018. Uh, by the time of IPO, we only have two operations, one is Hong Kong, the other is Shenzhen, but by the end of this year, we will have about 10 operations. Uh, so uh, we consider the first uh, three years from after IPO, 2018, 2019 and 2020 uh, uh, is our consolidative phase. And after that, uh, probably uh, you know, another three years after uh, this uh, 2020 uh, will be our phase of uh, rapid growth and development. Yeah, because uh, in this consolidative phase, you can see that we do this one after the other and then we, uh, we have been very selective. For example, uh, Hong Kong, of course, is our headquarters. And then we go to what we call the China's uh, international cities, uh, to Shenzhen, to Beijing, to Guangzhou, to uh, Shanghai. Yeah, so, uh, and nowadays we have this uh, Greater Bay Area development and also the Yangtze uh, River Delta. So these are the strategic locations for our company. So we have to build up the network and then consolidate one after the other. So once we have these uh, core uh, pillars in positions, then we can think about a more rapid growth. For example, uh, you know, uh, by the end of this year, we are almost uh, you know, everywhere in China. And then uh, if uh, in the next uh, phase, uh, we can have one old hospital is going to uh, develop one or two new hospitals in a new three-year cycle, then you can imagine the number will be escalating. Yeah, so I, I think uh, from Hong Kong, Shenzhen, and then all over China, and we have the greater uh, pay uh, opportunity, one hour uh, living cycle, high-speed train. And then in this uh, cluster of cities, we are talking about about 70 million populations. And then the GDP is pretty good in this area. And Hong Kong can give good support uh, because so close and then the, uh, the networking is so good. So uh, Hong Kong uh, is giving good support and Shenzhen is our, basically our China's headquarters. Uh, so with this full, firmly and well established, we can expand uh, quite readily in the coming few years.